my artist is Mrs. Bartlett with today's tutorial. So we should have finished with this part of our self-portrait where we looked at the resources provided. We maybe read about the different artists here in realistic portraits. We looked at some of Vincent van Gogh's stuff, maybe watched that really cool video. And now we're on to the next daily focus. So just to remind you guys, all of this is in this document here home learning self-portrait project instructions. So if you want to move a, a little bit ahead, so you can move ahead knowing sort of what's to come. So we started this project on Thursday. We're going to work on it for the entire week this week. And our projects are going to be due for Friday. So we are scrolling down to Tuesday, the 31st. So our daily focus is how can just an image of you communicate more than what a camera can see? So we're trying to communicate mood and feeling. So I have some guiding lessons for you in, the, in Google Forms. So I'm going to go into that in a moment. And then tomorrow, you're still pushing yourself. So from what's making this an OK to a great project. So are you really pushing what you see in um, are you really pushing what you like into this self-portrait? Is this a reflection of who you are as an artist? So that's really the direction that I'm looking for you to push yourself. Having it look like you is, is a really great start, but having it express who you are in other ways other than just how you look is the goal of really sophisticated self-portraits, and that's where I'd like for you to be pushing yourself towards. So Thursday is the final day that we're going to be working on self-portraits. And you're really focusing on the background and making sure that the background suits what you are trying to do. But we're focused on today. And today is really all about mood. So I'm going to be showing you where in our Google Classroom I have those sort of lessons for you. So we're going to be written work with the date. And what I've done is I've color coded things to hopefully make things a little bit easier. So the green is what you start with and the red is what you finish with. So the green kind of gets you in the right frame of mind with the right focus. And the red is where you reflect on what you've done and share things with me that help me guide the lesson for the next day. So what you are doing is same as always with the name class and then we're going to look at this series that I put together of 10 different self-portraits. We're going to answer three different questions using the same set. So when you scroll down and you see the same faces again and again, it's not the same question. First one is super easy. I'm just asking you to respond, which is called inspiring. Now this might not be the same one that you use for the other questions, but just look and I picked ones that I thought maybe would inspire you. So which one is the most inspiring? And I'm not asking you to explain why, but that is something that you should be thinking about and helping guide your own work. So the next question, what I'm asking for is a readable mood. And what a readable mood is in art, we're trying to read what the artist is saying. And it's not written in words, it's written with the visual language of the elements of art and the principles of design. So which mood can you most easily read? So you're going to pick, and there's numbers on there, 1 through 10. And which one has the mood that was just the most obvious? Oh, I know exactly what mood this person's in based on, and then you're going to answer that. So which one has the mood that you thought was the, was the most readable for you? And, and also, I want you to think about why. Sometimes the most readable mood might have to do with the, the mood that we're in. It might be easier for us to recognize a happy mood if we're happy or a, a more sad mood if we're feeling more sad. And then again, I'm asking you to look at these same portraits and draw some sort of inspiration. So what do you like about something that you see here? So if now it might tie back into the first question, which one is you know the, the most inspiring for you? Or maybe after you're looking at it, you're, you're thinking about different things like background. So in here, all of them have a background. Some of them, there's very little happening. In this Rembrandt here, it's just, it's so dark. And you almost 
can't see what he's painted in the background because he wants his face to really be the focus. So he still painted all this darkness with the purpose of making his face really come out. Now this artist used uh, a contrast of color. So she's using colors that are sort of opposites on the color wheel, complementary colors to make the, the face and the hair stand out. So here we see kind of an alternation of this yellowish green to this orangey red, back to this yellowish green, and it makes an interesting overall look. So we have actual background elements in this one and in this one, and here it looks almost like a landscape behind this one. So what what can, kind of inspiration can you draw? Maybe it has to do with the background. Maybe it has to do with how you applied the paint, the style. So we have a few different painterly styles where the artist is using color a lot more expressively. Here we have a style that's kind of a mixed media where the artist is using a combination of pencil and color to, to show you a different sort of mood. We have really interesting compositions where there's almost no background at all because the proportion of the face takes up the entire compositional space. We have Van Gogh with his very interesting and traditional style. So he does spend a lot of time on the background and the background almost looks like it's coming into the face over here. And why would he do that? Is, does he feel that he's trying to blend into the background? He's trying to make it not um, high contrast, but more of a low contrast situation here. So you're trying to find examples of inspiration. Maybe you're going to pick certain elements from different ones and try to use it in your own. It doesn't just have to be one that you're focusing on, but style, color theory, the mood, the composition. Those are some hints into how you can best answer this question. I really look forward to seeing your answers and seeing your completed work. I'll see you soon. Bye.